is about the succession of the Jewish heritage into the new covenant. Keep that in mind. We don't cut off our heritage. We don't cut off our traditions. Our traditions as a believing people with God have been given to us by our, our, our history, by our culture, and by the Holy Spirit. And so what we experience in our heritage of the Old Testament, we bring to the New Testament. That's not counting number one, that's just introduction. So, what Jesus is doing is taking the 12 tribes of the Old Testament, the foundation of the Old Covenant, and transforming that into the 12 apostles, the 12 who will be the pillars of the New Covenant. And so, keep that in mind. The first rule of thumb with our faith is that we're in a continuum we carry over the very best of the past, and we revitalize ourselves by the Holy Spirit into a new ministry. And Jesus says you don't do that without prayer. And so he goes to the mountain because the mountain is a place where he's alone with God. He's away from the crowds, and he spends the night in prayer. And he comes down, and he announces from all the disciples who have followed him, and they were numerous, he announces the names of the 12 apostles. He is laying the groundwork for a new covenant and a new way of understanding servant ministry in the church. So what do we say about prayer? It teaches us, first of all, that when important decisions come in our lives, like they did with Jesus, that we have to spend some time with God. Particularly in the New Testament, we spend that time with the Holy Spirit. We listen to the Spirit, which is the one who guides the church to truth. And Jesus prayed to God the Father because the Holy Spirit was within him but hadn't been given to the church. And so the first concept of prayer is that we listen to God and God's Spirit, perhaps when we're at crossroads, when we're at major moments in our lives. Keep that in mind. The second quality of prayer, as I'd like to say, is the way that God designed the human face. Two ears and one mouth. Listen twice as much as we talk with God. Because much of prayer is listening to the Holy Spirit, letting God's Spirit speak to our heart, speak to our will, speak to our mind. And one of the things that was complained about so much prayer was that people used to rattle on and go on and on and on and and Jesus gave us that idea in a, in a moment of God the Father's creation to go and listen to the Father, listen to the Spirit. And so that's the encouragement that we go before God, perhaps beginning in gratitude. I think the, the best way to begin all prayer is in gratitude. Albert Schweitzer once said, gratitude creates an intimate bond between people. And so when we begin our prayer, if we want to know God, if we want to have a bond with God, begin with gratitude. The third quality of prayer, I think, is that it has to lead to some kind of an action. The apostles weren't called to form a monastic community. They were formed to go out to the ends of the world and preach the gospel. And so prayer must lead to some kind of a ministry. It must lead to some kind of a living in the Spirit, of doing the will of God. And the fourth quality, there were 12. There wasn't one. There wasn't one. There wasn't one. There was a community. 
And so we pray as a community, we minister as a community, and we were sent out as a community into the world to be people of action, to be people of dynamic spirit, to be people of transformation. Somewhere in this muddied homily, I hope you see four qualities. And if not, come back for part two later. God bless you.